Hello friends, for today's video I wanted to give a list of some fall recommendations for some anime and manga, some TV shows, and some video games. Over on my main channel I did do an entire fall book recommendations video dedicated to some adult fantasy I think is perfect for the season, and then I'll also have a creepy books recommendation as well as a cozy books recommendation so that anything that you gravitate toward in the fall season you've got some recommendations and some suggestions. Jumping into it, the first recommendation would be The Girl from the other side. I'd recommend this whenever. This would be a good winter one as well, but any time of the year just because it's fantastic and I definitely think people should be checking this out. The art is very unusual. Every time I describe it, I describe it as very minimalistic, but it has such an eerie feel to it and it captures the emotions of the characters and these beings, these cursed beings, really well despite that you're not really getting much in the way of details. So just the way that the atmosphere and the feeling of everything comes through the page and from each panel I think is done exceptionally. But the reason that I think it fits so well for the fall is there's just this looming sense of dread, this fear that something is going to go wrong. And that I just think fits the fall season, that feeling of like everything's gonna die soon. <laughs> and I think that this captures that as horrible as that is to say. And there, there's also a certain feeling I find when you are out in nature and you are seeing the leaves start to fall and you hear the wind and it has kind of that scarier whistle sound to it and you look around, there's nobody around. That feeling, I just feel like that is the feeling when you look at this story. And there are aspects to it that are really cute and there are aspects that are really wholesome. Clearly this individual that is guarding over this little girl cares very much for her. So I think bizarrely it feels both creepy and cozy at the same time. But it's also a story you go into and you're like, I don't really know what's going on, <laughs> but in the best of ways. So this follows this guardian of this young girl and he is trying to protect her until supposedly her aunt is supposed to come back and retrieve her. The world is divided into two sections, or at least the part of the world that you see in the story. You have the side where people are, are you have where people are dwelling, and then you have the other side where you have these people who have been cursed. And if you come in contact with some being that has been cursed and they touch you, you're going to become cursed as well. And that is why you see this, this very different section from one area to the next where you do not have any overlap. So it's very odd that this little girl is being kept under the care of this being and you also wonder what's going to happen if one of the cursed people touches her will she be able to go home she so clearly wants to see her aunt and she's so innocent and sweet and it just seems like this individual her guardian must know something but what does he know and what's going on with this curse and why does this happen and you just don't really get a whole lot of answers when you're reading you just see their interactions and you see how much he cares about her and he cares about protecting her and it's fantastic highly highly recommend like i said very minimalistic very eerie but so so good after that we have the promised neverland <laughs> so i know a lot of people will tell you that the manga is much better than the anime but the first season of the anime i still highly recommend watching just because it is masterful it is basically perfect it's a perfect season of a show and you follow these young children who are all waiting to get adopted and they're in this orphanage and pretty quickly they discover when one of their friends has been adopted and they're going to leave they discover that maybe everything's not as innocent as they expected and then after that they're trapped they're kids they don't know what to do but they're trying to find a way to one get more answers and to protect themselves and each other. So it's quite well done. The sound effects in the show are fantastic. It sounds weird to say because it's obviously it's not live action, but the camera angles and the use of perspective is done so well. The music is beautiful. You root for these kids. It's done very well. And I just think fall is not only the perfect time for this, but also Halloween and October. If you've never checked out The Promised Neverland, this is the absolute perfect time to do it. Definitely check it out. It's fantastic. <laughs> After that, we have What We Do in the Shadows. This has real people in it. It's a show about vampires. It's kind of a mockumentary style of show. It has the dumbest humor and simultaneously very clever humor. So it's a great mix of both. It is very adult, I do want to say. Uh, they, they say and do very many ridiculous things, but I very much love the show. It just follows a bunch of vampires 
living in modern day. They have all the tropes that you'd expect from vampires. They can't go out in the sun. They can turn into bats, all that kind of stuff. And they are trying to live within modern society, but they're very old and they do not keep up with modern society well at all. They try to blend in with people and they're very bad at it. And then you also follow one of their familiars who is a human who is so excited at the thought of someday becoming a vampire himself. But in the meantime, he is basically their servant and none of them really respect him very much, but he's like, oh, it'll be all worth it when I become a vampire. And his name is Guillermo. And uh, they're just very entertaining and very stupid. And it's a lot of fun. And I feel like this is the the perfect time of the year to watch this show. After that, I had to really quick mention The Witcher. I just think that the monster hunter element of the story makes it perfect for the fall. If you've never tried The Witcher through the wild hunt, now would be the perfect time to do so. It still holds up. It's still so much fun. And the DLCs are so good. They're pretty much entire games in and of themselves. And the monster hunter aspect you would think would result in it just being kind of like a fun, let's go kill this thing. But the amount of depth to the side quests is phenomenal. The amount of humanity that's given to the monsters is incredible. And there's a reason that The Witcher is among a lot of people's best games. After that, I am not an expert. I've played very, very little of it, but I would be remiss to not mention Bloodborne. That's all I'm gonna say. Bloodborne is just so clearly a fall, October, creepy, bloody game. So had to mention that one. But getting to something I have played a lot of, we have Wolf, among Us. A lot of you probably know that this is based off of Bill Willingham's comic book series that follows fairy tale creatures that have been pushed out of their home and are now living among humans, glamour to look like humans if they don't otherwise look like humans. And you follow Bigby, who is the sheriff, and then you're following Snow, who assists him a lot of times in solving certain crimes and certain murders. And that is the comic book series, The Wolf Among Us video game is sort of like a prequel to the events of the comic book series and you are solving a specific murder. It's a telltale game, so that means there's not a lot of actual gameplay. So if you're somebody who's not really that big into games, you've never really played that much, this is definitely a really, really good one to try out. After that, going back to anime and manga, we have Witch Hat Atelier. This one currently doesn't have an anime, but the manga, the art is stunning. It is so beautiful. The story initially starts out very sweet and so incredibly whimsical and so vivid. And you're following this young girl as she is learning about magic. And then the story takes some pretty sinister turns, not quite the same way as The Promised Neverland. It's more about the themes and the heaviness within those. I can't recommend the series enough. It is so, so good. And I currently feel like not enough people. I mean, it's it's known, but I just feel like it deserves to be among the most popular. I mentioned a bit ago how Witcher is perfect given the monster hunter element, and the same can be said of Claymore. Just imagine that instead of men being witchers, you have women. And there's definitely that sense of society relies on them to hunt the monsters and keep them safe, but at the same time, they view them as separate, as dangerous, as other. And part of it is because they too, just like witchers, are enhanced in order to fight monsters. So this one is fantastic when it comes to that, but also there's a lot of really, really awesome action scenes. I will say sometimes the leveling up of the characters, I'll say, is uh, a little convenient whenever we need things to, the stakes to be raised, but we need the characters to meet those stakes, but it's still really, really cool. <laughs> and I really like our main character, Claire. After that, we have Castlevania. I'm specifically recommending this not just because of the fact that you have vampires and it's so bloody and so gory, but also because Castlevania Nocturne will be coming out very soon. And it just feels like the perfect time if you haven't tried out Castlevania before. Now you can try it out. There's also a lot of video games. I've never played any of them. I hear good things. So I'm hoping to play some of them at some point, but the show is really, really cool. The animation's awesome. The voice acting's awesome. And you just get really hyped for everything. And also there's a lot of great character moments and great monologues throughout the show. After that, we have 
Howl's Moving Castle. I just think that this is so whimsical and so cozy and so charming. I watched this for the first time this year and I really, really liked it. The use of color is so vibrant. The themes are executed really, really well. It's just such a, like I said, whimsical story and it's just, you feel so immersed in it. I'm not the biggest movie person, but this one I just felt like I could get lost in. I haven't watched much Studio Ghibli since I was a kid, so it was a lot of fun coming back to this one. And if you're somebody who's looking for a cozy movie night, this would be the perfect pick. After that, we have another video game, and that would be Near Automata. It just kind of has this gothic vibe to it that I think feels very Halloween-esque, and part of it is the way the characters dress, but also just some of like the existentialness, I guess you could say. That's a terrible way to put it. but. Nier Automata is just kind of looking at what it means to be a person, what it means to have a moral compass, what it means to have life, and is that diminished depending on whether you're a machine or not. And so it has these really cool sci-fi elements, but mixed in with kind of that gothic flair. And it's such a unique gaming experience. There's so many different ways that the game uh, it utilizes almost like different formats of gaming. So I really, really like Nier Automata. I need to replay it because I know that the various different endings kind of flesh out the story. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for some fall recommendations. Like I said before, I have a lot of book-centered videos that'll be over on my main channel. So definitely check those out if you're a big reader. But thanks so much for watching. Feel free to leave your own fall recommendations. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.